You know, as we talk about the future and high yielding corn, I believe passionately that ears make yield. And so we're in a plot of the future and we're working with Harry Stein and his team of Stein Seeds from Iowa, have been for years. And I'm really excited about the direction that Harry's taking. He's an innovator, quite an individual when it comes, you think about the soybean hybrids over the years, but now he's in corn and he's designing the corn of tomorrow. And I don't know exactly where it's gonna lay out, the corn of the future. I think it's gonna be a narrow rows in 30. If I was gonna be a prophet, I'd say 20 inch. But we're in a twin 20 plot. The field we're in, we have drip irrigation and we have tile on 30 foot centers. So we've been pouring the water to this field and the zones are about 11.2 acres a zone. And we've given Harry and the team at Stein two zones of 22 acres. They've come in and put at ultra high populations, their genetics. And so we have corn here at 40,000, 45, and 50, and 55,000. And we're checking to say, where does this corn start to put on a smaller ear? Or what are the challenges with really high population? I myself have been planting twin 20 corn for four seasons. And so our whole farm is in 20s. And so we're always comparing it. And as we watch it go back and forth from growing season to growing season, as nature changes the game, the 20s are really holding their own. In fact, they're out excelling the twins in a lot of areas. But this corn of tomorrow, as you can see, this is shorter corn. It's got an extremely upright leaf. So I'm excited about it. And so their plant breeders are saying, we're gonna have corn in that six foot height. The top three quarters of the plant are gonna be extremely vertical. And then when they get to the bottom leaves, they bred in a big floppy horizontal leaf. So they let the sun go deep into the canopy. And so this factory is really cranking. As the sun shines on here today, we have tremendous ET rates in here. We have excellent moisture. In fact, I'll be able to show you here. You can actually see stem water around these plants. It's coming from the bottom up. In other words, you see circles of moisture out here in the field because we're pumping water and nutrients underneath. And we're putting enough in on this plot that we're taking that factor out of it and will not be a factor in the yields. They brought in Almeco Planter and they planted lots and lots of varieties of every style and configuration and about a 10 foot of row in a twin 20. When I say twin 20, it's eight inches between. So we have eight inches between these plants and then a 12 inch gap and then an eight inch. So they've got it in four row config, eight inches, 12 inches, eight inches. And there's four rows of each of these genetics all the way through this half mile row. And so there's lots and lots of information that's gonna be brought out of here. And we're gonna to start to find the all-stars. And the all-stars last year in this plot were well over 300 bushel. And they were about in that 44,000 final stand plant count and they were flat rocking and rolling when it come to yield. So I'm excited as we learn with Stein how this goes. I think it's working pretty well because I put out a lot of Stein corn this year in our commercial fields, excited about what I saw in the plot work. And that's always how it is for you and I. We learn off of variety plots. We learn off of research. And then slowly we take it out of the research and into all field practices. So we'll dig in here and let's take a look at some of the things that we're looking at when we talk about leaf structure, where we talk about shorter plants, and then soon this field will be in pollination. And when we come back here again, we'll be able to talk ear count and ear size. So let's take a look. As we go a little deeper into this plot, let's take a look at the layout. As you can see here, we have a twin row with eight inches in between it, then a 12 inch gap, than another eight inch twin. And we talked about the desire of the corn of tomorrow is to have a lot of upright leaves at the top and drive that sunlight deep in the canopy to increase water take up. My desire is here in central Illinois, the goal is can we get a half inch of water a day up into this plant? Tough to do. And we've seen ET rates at a 0.45 day after day when we were in the 90 degrees 
Then it cooled off this week, and you start to see that we're dropping back down to a quarter of an inch. Quarter of an inch has been typical for years in Indiana, Illinois, and Iowa. But we're going to use Mother Nature to our advantage. So at the bottom here, we have some large, what I call horizontal or floppy leaves. And you can see the size of these guys. Even though this plant's only six feet tall, he's got a large floppy leaf, so he's shading the ground. Remember, any time the sun hits the ground, it's 2x the water uptake from the sun or evaporation compared to what the plant itself brings in through the root system. So you're much better to put a corn plant there than to let sun ever hit the ground. So in this case, we're looking at 45,000 plants. We see these large floppy leaves, so there's a lot of shade in this row. And then we see about here starts to transition, and by the time we get up here, you can see extremely vertical leaf layout. And so this plant's still about a week from tassel, and we'll, we'll come back and we'll watch it as it tassels. Your cue always is, if you have a vertical leaf, is you look at the tassel. If you see a flag leaf right up next to your tassel, you realize it's a vertical leaf corn. If you see the tassel sticking up all by itself, and then the top flag leaves are leaning way over, you're probably more in a horizontal or a floppy leaf hybrid. So understanding what hybrid you're gonna plant makes a huge difference on your row spacing and on you and I's water uptake and management and yield at the end of the season. So we're out here in a high population field where we plant these plots to see what we can learn to take to our whole farm. So the experiences I experience here have a tremendous impact on how we raise corn across our acres. In this particular field, this is a drip irrigation field. So the, the drip lines are in 40 inch centers. We're in 20 inch corn. We have, we're standing here between two varieties. And so we put variety in A and B in here to see if we can learn as much as we can. Both varieties have somewhat of an upright leaf, which I really like when we're going into high population. So if we look at the top of this plant, it's very vertical leaf and upright. And then as it gets to the bottom, it goes to horizontal. And we'll show you behind me here in, in a minute how dark it is in here. So we're at that 98% shade. There's no light hitting the ground. This was dropped at 45,000. And this corn's had a good day almost every day. Yes, we went through some heat in the beginning of July and the end of June, but with the irrigation, we were able to keep this corn running hard. So our uptake in here is not uncommon to be to almost 0.4 tenths of an inch of water a day coming up through this plant from under the ground. And within that coming is, of course, in the drip line, we have nitrogen and micronutrients and sulfur. So the stand count we're taking in here today at ear count is at that 44 and 45,000 ears. And we look at the difference in these two varieties, and you can see somewhat of a difference. And uh, one variety didn't maybe quite, it pollinated pretty well. And so when we talk about things that we learn in high yield blocks, you learn that plant health is absolutely crucial. And then insect management. And so all across the Corn Belt, especially in central Illinois, we have a tremendous pressure of Japanese beetles right at pollination. And all of us, if we're truthful, say we probably had some fields and pockets that got caught before we got there with the undercover and the insecticide to take them out. In this case, we pollinated extremely well. And I would be nervous if I saw kernels all the way around the tip of 45,000. That would say that Greg should have probably pushed it more into 50,000. And so I'm always uh, not disappointed if I see three quarters of an inch like I see here. And then we look and say, you know, how did this corn run? And you can tell that it's in good shape because every kernel starts at the butt and comes straight up. And that just tells us when we see from the butt to the tip in a straight line, that means this corn never had a bad day or under stress. If it would have, it would have scrambled. In other words, you'd see it scramble and it might've been 18 at the butt and then it would have went to 16. Every row on here is worth 10 bushel to me. So I never wanna see it lose a row after it's selected. In this case, this year selected 18 around, and it's gonna be, it's gonna finish at about 32 to 33 long. And so if we run the calculator, you can see it's gonna be in that 310 to 325, depending upon which variety that we're working with. Variety B here is a little bit different corn. It's more of a flex here, and it's got the potential to go longer. And it's six to eight kernels longer than variety A. 
and every kernel of lengths were six bushels of so immediately you can see there's probably going to be some 20 bushel spreads here. So this variety's hand checking more into 325 to 330. A ways to go yet. By no means are we selling that kind of yields. So what have we learned? We came in here and we put on an early fungicide. And so in some of these blocks, we have 120 foot blocks or one round of our 60 foot planter. We came in and we put a fungicide on at V6. We came back with a fungicide at V10. Then we came back in here at Brown Silk and we went ahead and applied another fungicide and some insecticide in a timely fashion to make sure that we're gonna get this crop right to the finish line. So as I look for disease, these plants are extremely healthy. We have a beautiful day today. We're about 83 degrees with sun, no wind, sun shining bright and straight down. And so we're getting a lot of updraw of water and where it's a critical stage. So we're at the stage we're talking about filling this ear and how much starch are we gonna be able to get into each of these kernels is really crucial. So as we work through this field, we talk about even emergence. Then we talk about having a base plus approach. So we had on 80 units of N, it's a corn on corn field. Then we came back in at V6 and with the Y drop, we put a small amount of nitrogen back on. At the same time, we put on a fungicide. So if our applicator were able to do two products at once. We came back then at V10, put a little more on again with the Y drop and again with the fungicide application in this block. Then back at tassel, of course, with the drip irrigation, we're able to give it nitrogen as it needs it. We're using soil scan to continuously monitor parts per million of nitrates. So you can say, well, this field has everything given to it. And that's what the goal is. What can we stretch this yield to? The goal is to say, can we take it to 400? And if I can take one field to 400 bushel, then I start to pick apart the approaches of a systems approach, and I start to apply it over thousands of acres of corn. And the end game is, what's our efficiency? What's our break even? How many pounds of nitrogen per bushel? In this case, we're gonna have some pretty good numbers. So, you know, we're well below point, uh, one pound per bushel in this field. And so we'll continue to take this field to harvest, and I'm excited to watch it go. And so every block through this 60 acres, every 120 feet, has some different technology. Some have micronutrients sprayed on at brown silt. Some have different micronutrients packages through the drip line. But as I walk in the field and I look at what we have, I'm satisfied where we're at today, considering the kind of weather that we've had the 2017 growing season. So when I mentioned that in this particular 120 foot block, which is three acres, had three passes of fungicide, every one of us probably did some quick calculations and said, man, Greg's got $90 an acre just in plant health. But it was budgeted that way, trying to say, what can we learn? In our own operation across the board, I budget one pass of fungicide all across our corn acres. And the temptation you see in the local area, especially the south of me, it's extremely dry. Guys are walking away from cornfields with a lot of gray leaf and rust to use that fungicide on the bean field because they're gonna make an insecticide pass for spider mites because it's so dry and they see a lot of bean diseases coming in. And so for us though, in this cornfield, we're saying we planned on three passes on this block saying, can we compare it to the following block to the west, which only had two, and then the following block only has one at brown silk, and say, can we get yield? I believe passionately that if we keep this plant happy and healthy through the whole growing season, there's gonna be a pretty good return from that. And so those are things that you and I have to challenge ourselves. Every one of us should be putting trials out, whether that's a variety trial for different genetics and traits, or whether that's different nitrogen applications. Maybe you wanna go into one strip and for three passes, just blow the checkbook and put on a ridiculous amount of nitrogen, say 300 pounds to say, does this hybrid respond? It's unique when you find an upright leaf hybrid like we have here that has a flex ear. I had to look hard for that. And when I say that it has an upright leaf, I'm talking about where you and I see the tassel leaf. And so I've cut the tassel off of this 10 foot high plant and you can see the very top flag leaf is hugging that tassel. That immediately tells you it's in the upright family. 
if this leaf was like this, and you and I saw 100% of that tassel sticking out like this, and you'll see that, that means it's a horizontal. It's more of a floppy leaf corn. And so you and I have to think about what do we need? If you're in 30 inch rows, you probably do want to stay somewhat away from the vertical leaf families. If you're in 20s like myself, a narrow row corn, then this makes a lot of sense. The whole goal is to drive the sunlight as deep in as we can. I would for sure like to get it on the ear leaf itself. So if we start at the very top here and we count down one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, this ear is set on the seventh node from the top. And that's a thumbs up for you and I as growers. That means this field is running right. If it was on the eighth node down, it just means that this field had a lot of stress. It could have been something that Greg did with tillage early, or it could have been a really hard weekend of say really cold temperatures or even a frost. But that's just nature's way of telling you high yield corn should be set on the seventh node from the top. And then you, of course, you're gonna immediately pull back the silk like we just talked about. And those rows are gonna run in a perfect vertical pattern. They're not gonna scramble at the butt. These are all things you and I learn. And it's hard to go into our cornfields. There's times I'm extremely humbled. And there's no question, you'll go into a field and you'll see where maybe we didn't get the Japanese sprayed right. Our very first field was pretty erratic emergence. And those late emerging plants got nailed by 15 kernels on the tip, didn't pollinate due to the high pressure Japanese. The minute we were scouting and saw it, we pulled the trigger and all the acres got sprayed. But the first 90, 90 acres took some late emergers, are gonna have some pretty tough pollination. That's how we learn. And we just need to admit, and we need to get in the cornfield, and we need to say, what does this cornfield talk telling us? How is the corn talking to us today? Because it always is. But when I walk in a field, I'm looking down the row here saying, how much shade and how much sun do I have? So we have a beautiful, bright, sunny afternoon on top of us. And I have an app here on our iPhone that's able to take a picture of this row and calculate what available sunlight's there. Show you how this little app works. It's called Canopy. -O. And as you look down the row, it, and you gotta be careful that you don't pick up too many brace roots. Just go ahead and take a picture. Hit your arrow. In this case, it shows 2.43% light. So it's in that 97.6% darkness because and you can see you know, some of the different light that's coming through on the app itself. Just a handy little tool for you and I to give ourselves a score. Do we need to either up our populations, change our variety leaf structure, or just get our planter to perform better? So for this field, for this variety, it gets an A plus. And we're utilizing every bit of that energy that's up above us. And we're pulling water up here today. This soil is moist and we are utilizing the nitrogen and all the nutrients that are in this profile and we're putting on some serious corn.